Hello, everyone. Welcome to Adventures in Good Health, a weekly podcast where we explore the natural approaches to the good life. And in that, I'm talking about good health. I am your host, David Malouf, just an ordinary guy who wants to learn more about natural approaches to healthy living. My plan for this podcast is to talk to noted herbalists, natural paths, and experts about herbal medicine. Ultimately, we are responsible for our own health, so taking control of your health through education, including understanding medicinal herbs, is the purpose of this podcast. My intent is that by the end of our first series of podcasts, I hope that I personally have gained enough knowledge to be considered, uh, no, probably not an herbalist or a naturopath that takes years. I hope to be considered an herb geek. If somebody says, David, you're such an herb geek, I'm going to own it. And I hope you own it too. Each podcast consists of two parts, starting with the deep dive where we explore specific aspects of good health. In this, our inaugural episode, we're going to discuss just what exactly is meant by natural approaches to good health. And second, we'll move on over to Doc's Herbal Corner, where we will discuss a particular herb. In this episode, we're talking sarsaparilla root. Just what exactly is it? What does it do? And what do we need to know about it? This podcast is sponsored by Dr. Tate's Herbal Tinctures and Tonics. And while we will mention the tonics, if they are relevant to the conversation, this podcast is not an infomercial. We are discussing a wide range of topics. I just wanted you to know who is sponsoring the show. Let's get started. Today, I'm joined by naturalist, master herbalist, nutritionist, detox specialist, lifestyle consultant, author and diplomat of integrated medicine. That's all one person. With over half a century of real world herbal medicine experience, Dr. Stephen Tates. Thank you, Dr. Tates, for joining us today. My pleasure on joining this podcast. You know, I'm looking forward to it. Looking forward to sharing, you know, natural approaches to health with your, you know, your listeners, because there's a whole lot that you're going to learn through each of these sessions that's going to help them with their life. Oh, that is fantastic. Um, you know, this, this podcast, each podcast is going to have a certain focus, uh, but let's go ahead and get started with perhaps the first question that some people may have. When we talk about natural approaches to good health, what exactly do we mean by that? Well, you hear a lot of people use that terminology, but from a natural path and herbalist standpoint, there are certain laws that govern natural approaches and govern our health. And so when we think natural approaches, people say diet or herbs or exercise or getting better sleep or drinking enough water, but there's three basic laws that govern the whole approach to natural health that is centuries old. And this, when you understand these laws very well, you can guide yourself or be guided in ways to improve your health that start to make sense. I'll give you an example. The uh, first law, which is very important, is that most forms of sickness and disease are due from the same basic causes, and that's our lifestyle. Germs and bacteria do not cause illnesses or diseases. They feed on what we have created in our body. So they have a role that can be destructive, but they're not the source of the problem. But so long as the, you know, um, people have looked for a particular germ or bacteria that caused the problem. But the problem starts with how we live our life. So when we talk about most forms of sickness and disease that do from the same cause, we, we eliminate in this like radiation exposure or um, 
living under some electro electric transformers you know, that right. that throw up that throw out the body's DNA and RNA you know in their system, but natural approaches deals with our lifestyle and it's a combined thing. In that category is our diet with supplements and herbs we take, how much water we drink, you know, how our bowels are moving, you know, exercise, how much sleep, how much stress and anxiety. Basically, what we do on a day-to-day basis is what contributes to the improvement of our health or the breakdown of our health. So something that we, we've been hearing about for many years is how in certain parts of the world, people live very long lives. Correct. And in other parts of the world, not so much. Correct. You're, what, what it sounds like what you're saying is we control. It, it's not necessarily well, where we are physically. If we're living on a Mediterranean island or a, an island in Japan, it's not the physical location. It's, it's how not, they're living their lives. I, I mean, we can be in New York City. <laughs> okay. <laughs> those things, depending on where we live, can be one of those basic causes because if the city you live in is full of air pollution, that's one of the things that can contribute. All right. To so there are environmental factors. So there are environmental factors, definitely. You know, uh, fresh mountain air, you know, uh, ocean water, good breezes. I mean, all that kinds of stuff do have an effect. But you can be sick in the best environment in the world and be healthy in the worst one. Okay? And it starts with what we put into our body, okay? what we eat. And too often, what we eat is the first step towards breaking down our system. And if we're eating things like uh, white flour products or too much uh, animal products, especially beef and pork, or we're doing too much fried foods or salty foods or artificial food, what ends up happening, the body can't break down. You know, so... Too much of that ends up storing in the body, like a, like, like a time bomb. Many times we have stored up food waste, food waste, which is called fat sometimes, sitting in our body, not for a day or two days, but like a few weeks, a few months, a few years can sit in the body. So some of the pizza and cheesecake you ate 20 years ago has hardened in your system and is affecting how the body functions. So the body wants to expel that. Absolutely. But it can't, it or can't. not effectively. Not effectively. There was the, that, that will come into the second principle, but we can end up storing decades of food waste in our body that slowly starts to break down the body. I've heard some, you know, some of my patients say, well, you know, last week I was doing real good. Now, all of a sudden, you know, I got high blood pressure, I got migraines, I got headaches. And I'm like, no, that time bomb has been ticking away in your body for a long time. And there have been symptoms that tell us that the body's basically pissed at us. Okay, but we don't know that that's what the body's saying. And then the body reaches a point of intolerance and says, I've been trying to talk to you and you have not been listening to me. So it goes into reactions, which is one of the other principles we'll get to. But it's that accumulation first of food waste in our body. That's okay. why you hear one of the one of the things that people start recommending is more fresh fruits, fresh vegetables, steamed vegetables, uh, grains that are not white and bleached. You know, making you know basic changes, and it doesn't have to be like overnight. You know, sometimes I tell people, you know, just get away from anything that's white. You know, like white bread, white rice, white flour, white grits, white corn. (laughs) Is that because it's been highly processed and the good nutrients have basically been processed out? Gone. And that's when you see things, you see titles on food that says fortified and enriched. Those are things that you say, "Uh uh-oh, no. Red flag. Red red flag because... Why did this need to be fortified and enriched? We have to stop reading labels. We have to think about what we're purchasing if we want to improve our health. Another thing is like 
you know, artificial food. Now they tell you it's not real. Artificial imitation means what? Not real. It means that it's been processed. It's been stripped and it's been processed. Enriched means, oop, when we process this, we stripped out all the vitamins and minerals. So we added some chemical vitamins and minerals back in the system. One of the things that stayed in my mind that kind of changed my path in life is that I was addicted to strawberry preserves. Okay. You know, my, my family wanted to keep me quiet. Yeah. They got me a jar of strawberry preserves and some whipped cream, put me in front of the TV. I was off, I was like a junkie on strawberry Yeah, I was going to say, you were probably on some sort of sugar high. <laughs> oh, no, yeah. Okay, <laughs> big time. And then one day I was in the supermarket, and my consciousness had been raised some. And I had my strawberry preserves. And then I was just looking on the labels because I had nothing else to do. Then I had a bunch of chemicals that, you know, we never look at because we don't want to think mm-hmm. about what's added to it. Sugar, okay. I was a sugar junkie, so I was okay with that. What stood out was artificial coloring. I'm like, oh, wait a minute now. I got strawberry preserves. So strawberries are supposed to be red. Yeah. So what happened to the strawberries where you had to color what was in this red? You know. So what, so what happened to the strawberries, and were they even really strawberries? My point in these examples is that we have to question, as a first step in natural approaches, what we put in our body. I started to evolve with that even before I understood you know, that law. So we think about or should start thinking about what we're putting in our system as far as food. That's one of the approaches. Next law is we don't drink enough water. We drink juice. We drink tea. We can drink lemon water, Mm -hmm. but the body knows the difference between water and any other fluid. You mean just like plain old water? Plain old water. I mean, that's the primary liquid we need in. Our kidneys, our liver, our heart, our lungs knows the difference between water and any other fluid. That doesn't mean that lemon water is not good. That don't mean cucumber water is not good or, you know, fresh squeezed juices that has its place but it doesn't count towards the water we need in our body, which is the lubricant. I compare water to our body like oil to our automobile. Okay, so we can give it a tune-up. You know, yeah. We can change the tires. We can wash it, but we don't change the oil, and the oil goes bad. So the engine starts running bad. So some of these things are like basic lifestyle changes. We question where we eat. We try to eat more natural. That's going into those natural approaches. We increase our water consumption. Some people say, well, how much water we need to get in our system? I would say anywhere from a minimum of 48 to 64 ounces of water. Per day? Per day. You just want to, like, start your day with 16 ounces of water. Okay. And then sip, put down, sip, put down, sip, put down all day long with just straight water. Now, you can drink juice and teas and stuff in between, but the, the liver, the kidneys, our heart, our lungs need that lubricant, which in turn helps with that chemical and hormone balance, but also is the lubricant that helps our body in digesting and assimilating the food. So especially if the food is good, but even if the food is not good, that water can help maybe start to flush this out because when you're eating food that you shouldn't be eating, as I said earlier, it stores in the body. So next step is getting a lot of water in the system. I don't really hear to that concept that you need to drink uh, half your body weight in ounces. Because if you're 300 pounds, that translates into 150 ounces of water. Yeah, body, that's a lot of water. And the body's not going to handle that. Okay, let me, let me think. I'm, I'm trying to process this. Oh, it's that, that's, that's, that's because not everybody likes the taste of just plain water. Yeah. And so, all right, so let's say I don't like the pla- the taste of plain water. Coca-Cola has water in it. It has oh, acids and other stuff oh, in it. But wine has water. So go ahead. It. Yeah, wine all right, has all right, water. So, all right, so those things, you're not. <laughs> no, no. It's got to be water. Well, it's got to be water because our body knows the difference. You can't mm-hmm. fool it. You, know, you can put lemon water in the body and say, mm-hmm, I saw that lemon. You know, I saw that in there. So 
it doesn't moisturize our organs to help them work right. So what happens is those organs almost get brittle like an old dry sponge that you found under the refrigerator, under, under, under the sink. Well, it's interesting because a lot of our organs are basically filters of different types. Mm-hmm. And, and they introduce other chemicals in the blood bloodstream yeah. things, but they're filtering and they use the water is it's critical right. to that process. Bingo. Exactly. It's just straight, just plain water. You can do teas and other stuff that will enhance what you're doing. My point is, is that it's our lifestyle change. What we eat, what we need to avoid, what we need to learn with that, water consumption. Now, I'm going to go through some of the others that comes with it. Uh, exercise. We get the exercise. I don't feel like exercising. I love those commercials. Just take our food supplements and you don't have to exercise. Well, you got to work the machinery. You got to make it walk. You got to make it function. And if you don't do that, then it starts to break down. So I'm going to kind of go through in the time we have kind of a list of the things okay. we need to look at. So within the session, people that have their pen and paper and writing notes can say, well, all right, what? everyone get your pen and paper, unless you're driving. Yeah, in which don't case, do if you're that. driving, just wait till you get to your destination. Then you can replay the podcast. There, there you go. There All right, you get go. your pen and paper. Okay. I, I was trying to write while I was driving. No, no, no that would no, not be no, no, that would not be a healthy approach to go. No, 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 no. That's a, that's the lifestyle choice is destructive. Yes. <laughs> All right. So we are talking about our diet. Okay, and, and we just just kind of overview because we can spend you know several sessions just breaking that down. But we start with our diet. Then there's water consumption. Then there's exercise, okay? Then there's, um, along with that, sleep. Proper sleep and rest. That's one of the other kinds of things that is important. Our thoughts and our emotions play a good part. I have this saying that says, every thought we think and every emotion we feel has an effect on every cell in our body. So if you think that you're sick, even if physically, you're not, you can start to manifest problems in your body. How often people with stress and anxiety, their blood pressure elevates. Yeah. And ulcers start to build. And they may not have any physical reason for that. Normally they do, mm-hmm. okay, they add to it. But you know, stress and anxiety. I had another thing that I always recommend to people is to get a life. You know, people who are just so into you know their work. But their children, they don't have a life. They don't do anything that starts to feed their soul. They don't know how to have fun. You know, they don't have date nights. They don't have any kind of stuff. And those are poor lifestyle choices that contribute to the problem. Then there's using your supplements and herbs sensibly to help enhance these, these uh, lifestyle changes you have to make. I hear people, they approach the vitamins and herbs, supplements, as the primary. The word supplement means to supplement your lifestyle changes, to add on, not to be the front runner, but be behind it, to help the bowels to move better, to help the blood to circulate better, to help strengthen the energy of the body so that the body can start to function better. These are some of those are. Lifestyle changes that uh, are very important. Uh, constipation, going back to bowel movement, right. Right? which is also important, which what we eat has an effect. Okay? I have this saying, movement is life, stagnation is death. The more the body's moving, exercise, bowel movement, blood circulation, you know, water consumption, the healthier you potentially can be. The more stagnant stuff gets, the more you bring yourself closer and closer towards destruction. So you're staying with bowel movement for a moment, okay? Normal bowel movement should be once for every time we eat. Not every meal, but every time we eat, okay? And if we eat nothing the whole course of the day, we still should have one or two good bowel movements a day. Otherwise, that stuff stores in the body. Well, there, there are some people who, I mean, they, it's part of their, they, they call it normal, quote, mm-hmm. Air quotes normal that they might go to the bathroom once every three days, once every four days, 
That's They've been doing chronic, that for years. Chronic constipation. That stored up food waste. So then to, to, to wrap this up, people say, well, what do I need to do? Well, you need to do the opposite of what we just talked about in the beginning about most forms of disease are due to a bad lifestyle. So you're not drinking enough no water, then drink more water. You're not having enough bowel movement, increase your bowel movement. You're not exercising, start exercising. So the first principle talked about what contributes to it, but then you look to correct those things that contribute to it. Right. By exercising, by drinking water, by watching what you eat. Then the body's own natural ability, this is important, natural ability to cleanse, heal, and rebuild itself can kick in, and then you can supplement it with the supplements and exercise and stuff. But the body is that true healer. That's a God-given gift. We just have to apply those principles that we've been violating that's created a problem right. to take on, to improve you know, our health and then help the body, not take over but help the body. Well, spoiler alert, uh, in one of our upcoming podcasts, we are going to focus on constipation. Mm-hmm. Well, I look forward to uh, talking to you more in depth. Okay. Uh, so you talk about water mm-hmm. and, you know, this podcast, this show is being sponsored by Dr. Tate's Herbal Tinctures and Tonics. Mm-hmm. The name sounds familiar. Well, it, it does. Well, so <laughs> your, your, your company has been marketing uh, the tonics for over 20 years. Mm-hmm. What, what world is water? I mean, I'm trying to understand because the, the tonics, they come in 32 ounce bottles. Mm-hmm. It's yeah, liquid. But, see, but here's the thing. The tonics work even better. They're strong. They work. Yeah. But if you're changing your diet and you're drinking water, especially it enhances what the tonic can start to do to start to move out those stored up impurities. The tonic will do it, but with the water consumption and change in lifestyle, it will take a shorter period of time combined with the tonic to start to see short and long-term health benefits. So it's like the the, the blood tonic is more like a longer-term strategy. Yeah. It's longer-term. It, it's longer-term when people are not doing other changes okay. to their health. If people are doing some of the things we outline mm-hmm. and we outline in, in future podcasts, then you're drinking the tonic, it's going to work even faster because you're working with the body. You're not just taking a tonic, you know, to be your cure-all, but then you're still eat, drinking Patron, you know, every day, and you're still, eat, you know, eating pizzas and stuff every right. day. It will still help. But when you make those changes, it's going to work better at helping the body reduce blood pressure and cholesterol numbers and, you know, diabetic numbers and inflammation and stuff in the body. Okay. Well, we're definitely, over the course of these podcasts, we're going to talk a little bit more about the individual tonics too, Absolutely. you know, because, you know, it tries to try to understand exactly how they work and what they do. Uh, the docs detox, the blood tonic are just a couple that mm-hmm. uh, come right to mind. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I look forward to that. All right. Well, Doc, thank you very much. My pleasure. For our very first inaugural session for Adventures in Good Health. Mm -hmm. And we're going to walk on over, figuratively, to Doc's Herbal Corner. All right. So now, all right. So here we are. We're moving. Mm -hmm. Just everyone just imagine we're moving over to Doc's Herbal Corner. I'm sitting in a special chair. All right, now we're in the leaning, special chair. Leaning so back. <laughs> in each podcast, you know, we have a main topic. Uh-huh. And so today we we talked about natural approaches to good health at a fairly high level. Uh-huh. But each podcast is going to include Doc's Herbal Corner. Absolutely. And in this session is we're going to talk about a particular herb. There Absolutely. are so many of them. Uh-huh. I mean, I could... Personally, can walk into an herb store and it can be overwhelming. And so knowledge is power. And so someone who walks into a, a, an herbal store, if they have the knowledge beforehand, uh, that puts them in a much better position. And that puts them in a safer position. Okay. Because um, too often, the people in the health food stores have no training, not even basic training. Mm-hmm. On, on the different herbs. And this is important because 
I hear people say a lot of times, which is why Dr. Herbal Corner is extremely important to me personally as an herbalist, as a naturopath, as a mm-hmm. nutritionist, because the less prepared you are, the more mistakes you can end up making. I hear people say a lot of times, oh, herbs are safe. Uh-uh. Not, 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 not necessarily. Not necessarily. I'll uh, give you an example. I could be on a blood thinner like Coumadin or heparin or something like that, mm-hmm. okay, to uh, thin my blood because it's clotting too much. Then, and I've been in stores where people will say, well, you can take some inclination golden seal or golden seal, and that will help. Well, the problem is, is that inclination and golden seal are blood thinners. Now, if you're already on blood thinners, then you take some herbs that are blood thinner. You see, one and one don't make two, it makes 11 in my math, because now you're over the edge, because now you're taking too much. Then your body goes through crisis, and the, and the golden seal and echinacea are being blamed for the problem, but it's because people did not understand and didn't do their homework. So there's a proportion you take. There's things you need to understand mm-hmm. about the herbs before you take them because some of your most powerful healing herbs can potentially be your most dangerous if you don't know what you're doing. It's like driving down the highway in the wrong direction. You know, there's going to be a crash and burn because you didn't know what you were doing. The herb that we want to talk about today is sarsaparilla. 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 Now, sarsaparilla can come in many forms, but the best form is in root form. And sarsaparilla is an excellent, excellent blood cleanser. And the reason why it helps in, in cleansing the blood is because it's increasing the circulation of the blood. The more this, the blood is circulating through the body, through water, exercise, stuff like that, and then an herb like sarsaparilla, then it helps the body, helps the body cleanse out impurities. It doesn't do it on its own, but it assists the body okay. along with the things you're doing. Now, sarsaparilla is, we consider a complementary herb. They goes into other combinations that help those combinations work better. Some uh, roots and herbs that we will cover through these various sessions are standalone. You know, you know, I got this. <laughs> so okay. I, don't, I don't need any help. Right? My first cousin is going to be over here with me. Sarsaparilla is that combiner that works well in herbal forms more than by itself. Taken by itself uh, and taken too much can cause too rapid a cleansing and itching and irritation because you're not, you don't know what you're doing with it. So it's a good blood cleanser, but mixed with other herbs, it's it has a much, much better response. Is it, is it, if you go into a herbal store, is it like a powder or is it like little pieces of, of root? Your best form for that would be in root or bot form. Sarsaparilla root, okay. sarsaparilla bot Not the leaf or... Not or... the leaves. No, the leaves are just not strong enough. Okay. Right? But you, in this case, sarsaparilla is strongest in the root form. And it's bitter. Not, you know, gaggy. It's a bitter. Yeah, it's a bitter. You know, your better herbs, as we go through this, you're going to find a very, very strong cleanser, especially for our circulatory system, which means our blood, our urinary tract, you know, our glandular system. You know, it helps in flushing things out of the body. But some of the things that sarsaparilla can help with is decreasing pain and swelling. So the inflammation in different areas of the body and the swelling and the swelling contribute to pushing on the nerves in the body to cause pain. Okay. Sarsaparilla is one of those herbs. You can't take a long, but it has to be in moderation, but it's best combined with other, other roots, will help decrease the swelling, which decreases the pain. Now, how does this happen? Because when you, It happens because when you're swollen, then that swelling pushes up against the nerves in the body which contributes to that pain. It can slow down the growth of cancer cells, help with RA, which is rheumatoid arthritis. Okay. Helps with like psoriasis, you know, which is outbreaks on the skin, uh, inflammation, uh, 
and particularly, um, particularly around our liver with liver damage. So sarsaparilla is one of those roots also that helps protect our liver, you know, and the liver kind of regulates everything in the body. Uh, so it's a great anti-inflammatory. Is it something that someone would what, add to like a tea or? It, it, because it's a root, it would be added to other roots, and it's typically not okay. a tea. It's more like a tonic. Oh, more like a you, tonic. Okay. That you take small amounts at a time. And, okay. And then it can uh, help with flushing out uric acid, which can then contribute to gout, and it, it has what's called antimicrobial benefits in it, which helps in, in eliminating fungus and bacteria in the body. So, wow. So it's a powerful herb. Now, to wind this up, people might say, well, how do I find out about what an herb does? Get you a cup of herb books. Read up on the properties, and then read up on the, what the properties mean. It will make you be a little bit more informed. Of course, you need to come to an herbalist or nutritionist that's local, in your area, but then if there's one that's not local, then, you know, I'm around, you know, stirring up trouble. <laughs> but people need to be guided, you know, in the beginning when they start working with these and respect the power of the herbs as you use them. So look up sarsaparilla, you know, go online. There's the beauty of the internet, you know, go to Wikipedia and stuff, and then learn what the sarsaparilla can do more for the body. Or oh, they can call me. Or you know, or they can call. Well, how so? So, what's the best way for for someone to reach you? Say online. Okay, they can go to um, Carter Tates at Gmail dot com, or they can go or a to Carter, Ch- Carter Carter Tates Carter Tates at Gmail dot com. Gmail dot com. Okay, okay. That, that's one way. Or they can call me directly. You know, on four four nine four three one one seven one. But if you do that. The extra benefits you will get would be by saying, I heard you on the podcast. You know, I heard you on the podcast because when you mention that, you may get more benefits because I know that you're listening and trying to learn at the same time. Right. That is fantastic. Well, Doc, this is our very first podcast. It was exciting. It went fast. Yeah, I know. I looked up and said, "Uh oh. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, we're not on a set. We're not a particularly set timeline, but this uh, 30 minutes or so definitely went fast. It went like, okay. But you know, but I think we left, I know we left the listeners with some things to think about. If we, if we get people to think, hmm, lifestyle changes, hmm, sarsaparilla, then you and I have done our job because it's about stimulating people to start looking at what they're doing and researching the things I recommend. I tell people, don't just believe me, investigate, and then you learn more. Well, our next episode is coming right up, and we are going to start our deep dives with each of these episodes. So I look forward to hearing from you. Yeah, yeah, I look forward to being here. And now a quick word about our sponsor, Dr. Tate's Herbal Tinctures and Tonics. Dr. Tate's all-natural herbal formulas which are the true definition of herbal tonics, have been available for over 20 years. These specially formulated herbal tonics are designed to help cleanse, heal, rebuild, and revitalize your body, which will help improve your overall health. Dr. Tate's offers the herbal blood tonic, Doc's Detox, herbal fat burner, herbal female tonic, and herbal male tonic. If you would like to learn more about the tonics and where to pick up your bottle, call 404-459-8696 or visit Dr. Tate's at drstephentates.com or Google Dr. Tate's online. That does it for this episode of Adventures in Good Health. We would like to hear from you regarding this podcast and any suggestions you have for future podcasts. You can reach us at Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Please subscribe and leave a rating or a review. Until next week, this is David Maloof exploring natural approaches to good health.